Hello and welcome. This is my dividend portfolio 2022. So I started this portfolio in January 2021 and it was really to prove a point to somebody that I know. So they said to me that it was very difficult for them to save for a house deposit and it was almost impossible to do it and, and which I applied. Well it's not and if you was to invest some of the money you spend on non-essential things you could have your deposit for your house in less than five years and um they said if we were that easy everybody would do it so i thought i'd do this and prove that it is that easy so that being said and done here's my portfolio so it's a year old now and the reason i haven't started anything before is because uh, this is a dividend portfolio and i wanted it to get set up, get some stocks in there and get them so they are actually paying dividends so I can show you the benefit of that. So on a monthly basis, my target is to invest 255, 250 pounds a month. Um, it's not very often I achieve that target. My The minimum I invest is 125 pounds a month. So that is the goes cost of my companies. So and that's what I want to show you, what small amounts of month you can invest to what returns you're likely to see in real time. And I'm sharing that journey with you now. So I um, hold 75 investments in my account. Uh, today I was really going to show you what I hold and how many I hold of each, not why I hold them. And then I'll say that for another date. So my first company in my profile is 3M and I hold 3.4 shares in that company. Next one is AFLAC and I hold 1.2 shares. Next one is AGNC Investments <clears throat> and I hold 3.8. Next is Apple, where I hold 0.45. Archer Daniels, I hold one and a little bit. at and I hold 1.8. Automated date processing, I hold 0.32 shares. Aviva, I hold three shares. Bank of Montreal, I hold 0.67. Bank of Nova Scotia, Scotia. I hold one, so one shares of those. BP, I hold nearly 61 shares now. British Tobacco, I hold 1.7 shares. Cardinal Health, I hold 1.17 shares. Caterpillar, I hold 0.3 shares. Chevron, I hold 0.6 shares. Chubba, I hold 0.36 shares. Coca-Cola, I hold 0.14 shares. EK Labs hold 0.28 shares. Emerson's Electric I hold 0.68. Franklin Resources I hold just over two. General Dynamics I hold 0.34. Gladstone Land I hold 0.4 shares. GlaxoSmithKline I hold 3.8 shares. Sorry, 0.38 shares. IBM, I hold 0.48. Illinois Tool Works, I hold 0.28. These next few uh, ETFs, so if you know nothing about investing, ETFs are the best way to diversify your portfolio. So they're the easiest thing to do. You, you buy into them and then the company that, that manages those ETFs will buy shares. You'll buy into that fund that the shares are they hold and that's the easiest way to do it. So if, you, so if you know absolutely nothing about investing and you want to get into investing, these are things you want to, not these personally ones, but ETFs are the way to go to start you off to, to get you started. So the first one I've got is Investco SP500 High Dividend and I own 0.2 in that. Then the next one's a BlackRock iShares FTSE 100. I've got three, just over three in that one. Uh, the iShares Global Clean Energy, I've got 2.8. And the iShares JP Morgan government bonds is 0 0.5. <clears throat> the next company I own is Sainsbury's. I own two shares in Sainsbury's. Johnson & Johnson, I own 0 0.38 in those. JP Morgan & Chase, I own 0 0.4. Kimberly Clark, I own 0 0.4. Legal in general, I own just over two. Lowe's, I just, I own. 0 0.23 LTC properties 
I own 0.16. Mainstream Capital, I own 0.15. McDonald's, I own 0.27. Medtronics, I own 0.5. The black ball in here, so for those of you who have got a keen eye, Meta Platforms or Facebook is not a dividend paying stock. It's a value growth stock and it's the only one I have in this portfolio. Um, I brought it when they changed the name to Metaverse and I uh, could see what they wanted to do. They they basically want to create a, a you know, virtual virtual world, a bit like uh, the movie Ready Player One. And I see a lot of potential in that. So I thought I'd slowly put some money in there and see where it goes. Next company I own is Microsoft <clears throat> and I 0.4 shares in them. The next company is National Grid and I own 0 0.48. Then I've got New Car, 0 0.7. Penning Group, 3.38. Pepsi Cola, 0 0.4. This is an ETF and I own 4.7. This is another ETF and I own 0 0.67 of that. Uh, the next company is PPG Industries, they're 0 0.4. Procter & Gamble, it's again 0 0.4. Prospect Capital, 0 0.82. Reality Income, 0 0.96. Records and Bexter, 0 0.74. Rio Tinto, 0 0.27. Roper Technologies, 0 0.1. Royal Bank of Calendar, 0 0.6. Royal Dutch Shell, 8.09. Sergo. 0 0.4, Shaw Communications, 2.5, Sherwin and Williams, 0 0.2, Stag, 0 0.1, uh, sorry, 1.7, Starbucks, half a share in them, Cisco's, 0 0.8 of a share in those, T. Rowling Price, 0 0.3, Tesco's, just over 2, then I've got my next set of ETFs, so the Vanguard, FTSE 100, 0 0.1, the Vanguard, all world high dividend, one and a bit, the Vanguard Emerging Markets, 0 0.12, my Vanguard S&P 500, 1.1, my Vanguard UK Gilt, 1.8, and Vanguard US Corporate Bonds, 1.2, got VCI, VICI Properties, 2.0.28, Fornado Reality Trust at 0 0.25, WW Granger 0 0.14, Walmart at 0.4, and Whitestone at 0 0.69. So they are my 75 investments. They're well diversified across many sectors. So let's see how it goes. So let's jump into the dividends I got from last year while I was getting the portfolio up and running. So going through the holdings, they're in the same order as they are on my platform, Trading212. And I've had, well, 65 pence from 3M, 53 pence from, this is for the whole total for the year, by the way, 53 pence from AFLAC, 61 pence, uh, £1.60 from the next one, I'm going to read them all out, I've read them all out once, so then Apple, so forth and so on. I'll just scroll down them slowly. If you'd like to look at the individual ones, you may. Some better ones. So BP, obviously that's a big one. I have a large holding in those. Rich Tobacco is doing quite well. Cardinal Health is okay. Caterpillar is a grower. Another oil company there, Chevron, quite like that one. Most of my dividend holdings pay a quarterly dividend. I've got one or two that pay twice a year, but mostly a quarter of ones. I've got the rest of them made up uh, monthly dividends. So I have monthly dividend ones because I want the compound in effect quite quickly and that's the best way to do it with monthly dividends but they may not be the best investment for long term 
as generally the capital growth just doesn't go up but the dividends come in so it can balance it out so they're not they're very sh for me they're very short term in, in terms of you know, it's going to help me build a portfolio quite quickly and quite get some money invested in there but long term they're probably not something i'm going to hold long term so going through my etfs doing okay sainsbury's so that was a that's one of the late one i added to the portfolio sort of october time 2021 Johnson Johnson's another good one there. So as you can see, uh, legal in general, that was another late one. So I haven't had any dividend payments yet from that one. There'll be a couple like that in here somewhere. Yeah, Meta platforms, again, they don't pay dividends. Microsoft is another one as a late adder and National Grid is another one I added late. But I've got some holdings in them now. So pause if you know, if you just want to look at the individual ones I've had each month, all the totals, please feel free to do that. Get towards the end of them now. Starbucks, I quite like Starbucks. And my Vanguard ETFs, best performing one was my full world high dividend yield. So the total for 2021, I got £51.65, which isn't bad. You know, for, the, for, for getting a portfolio up and running in the first year, I'd have thought that was a good return. Uh, just to show you what that was like on a monthly dividend. So you started off quite small, month one, not too much coming in. Month two, even less. Month three starts to build. So now I'm starting to get text dividend date on a lot of the holdings I initially started with. And it starts to build quite nicely. Then I had a special dividend pay there, so why it's payment so high, it was a special dividend. So I tend to ask the break from the norm, the outline outsider on this, and then back down to normal. But it's been steadily growing month on month throughout the year, which I'm quite pleased about. This chart just shows you how much each company in the visual representation has paid me dividends, which is it's always good for visuals, I think. So the annual, the average money I deposited a month, because I didn't record my monthly deposits, was £233 for the total of 2021. I've got some other stats on there if you're interested. So the total money I deposited in 2021 was £2,804. The total money invested for that year, for 2021, was 2855 that includes my dividends, so I'm reinvesting the dividends. The, the account value, so the value of my fund at the end of December the 31st, 2021, was £3,173, which is quite good. So that gave me a return on investment before, before dividend reinvestments of 13%, which is quite high. That's, you know, in the bank, if you look at the bank rates now, they are 0.1% interest or thereabouts. It's below 1%. It'd be very difficult to find something over 1% these days. So to have that return on investment before dividend doing reinvestments is amazing. My return on investment, including the dividend and reinvestment, is 11.13%. Again, still over 10%. It's amazing. But this is the one I'm sort of more interested in, in terms of personally, is my return return on investment from dividends. So at the moment, I'm getting a 1.84% return on dividends. So for every pound I invested, so for every hundred pounds I invest, I'll get one pound 84 back, which beats the, again, it's beating the bank if you had it in a savings account, interest rates. Next one's a bit more of a summary. So the dividends per year matches that, obviously. The dividend yield is slightly less. So this is the yield I'm getting from the amount of money I invested. And this, people look at this and go, wow, that's, that's not that great. It, this, this will change month on month. And it's quite low because I do monthly deposits. So every time I deposit, that will then 
drop that versus the and it will only start rising when the dividends come in if i don't deposit any money in this portfolio with the companies that i've got in it should give me a yield of 3.71 percent a year so it's operating just under half of that if you looked at it from that point of view my average dividends per month was four pound 30. so again not a bad not a bad little thing uh i'd sort of targeted an average of five pound a month in the first year so i wasn't too far off there and my capital growth so that's how much the stocks are valued now is 371 pounds sorry 317 pounds so essentially the 2000 pounds that i put into the account 2800 pounds i put in is actually made if i sell everything today or on the 31st of december 2021 i would have made 317 pounds for, for the year so that's not bad going so let's have a quick look at where i am today so currently sitting at 12.21 percent return 349 pounds so if you take a quick look at my allocation i'm quite heavily invested in oil and some etfs so these are well i hold other other trading accounts other portfolios on different platforms and i've held them for quite a number of years and um so from my father i was into oil and so that's why they're kind of in here but because they help get the portfolio they do pay a great dividend they have a great dividend yield help me get the divot help me get this portfolio going in terms of that so that's the portfolio uh one thing i was one thing i've sort of tried to do is i've tried to do a predictor so what would it what would it pay out so at a moment it is 75 percent accurate it can wildly change because i've only got one year's worth of data so the one one year's worth of data as you can see i only managed to invest 2800 pounds I've then increased that by three thousand pounds a year because that's my target or 250 pounds a month so within five years which is the window my my colleague had said to me that um he was going to save for if i'd have carried on like i am now i would have, he would have saved fourteen thousand pounds but doing it investing it it looks like he could have he could potentially have up to fifty thousand pounds so it goes to show it is that easy and that's why i'm tracking this so so throughout 2020 <clears throat> my predicted dividend return should be 110 pounds and my predicted fund at the end of it should be just under 10,000 pounds so as i track this through the year month to month let's see how close i get to that so the key I notice if it's already running at predicted this year using the yield I've got at the moment because I've had some dividends in already for January 2022 but I haven't invested any money so the dividend yield is running at 2.99 percent which is again close to where it should be uh it looks like I could end up with 175 pounds but that will change as I invest money so let's see how they're close to get so this is the target I'm aiming for in terms of dividend returned is 110 pounds that's my target okay guys uh if you like this video uh please give it a thumbs up if you're interested in starting your own dividend portfolio investment uh trading 212 is now taking on new accounts and i'll put a link in the description below um how to get free shares so it's free shares for me free fresh shares for you and i'll just pop that up now i get free shares if you enter this code when you're signing up they'll give you a stock and they'll give me a stock. Thanks for watching. Cheers.